February 13, 1947, was the day Le Duc No. 1 blew in, the oil well that was to change the entire energy supply picture in Canada. That year, Canada was importing 90% of the petroleum she needed. Le Duc, discovered after years of exploration and the expenditure of many millions of dollars, proved that Western Canada was a good hunting ground for oil. As more and more companies joined the oil search, more discoveries were made. And by the late 1960s, Canada had become, on balance, self-sufficient in oil production. The Le Duc discovery has been called one of the most important economic events in Canada's history. This motion picture, made at the time, documents many of the activities surrounding the Le Duc discovery. Harvest, fine, full sheaves, fields of golden grain ready to harvest. The harvest which has been our living since we began to farm this land. This is good earth. We've lived by it since we helped to clear and level it years ago. And now it's a good heritage for our children. Not an easy life, but one full of rewarding labor and satisfaction. Our little market town of Leduc isn't far away. It's a quiet place. We go there to shop, get our machinery fixed, buy gas and oil, and to talk things over with the neighbors. Our churches we built here in the country where we live and work. A man can't rightly till his land and watch the brown earth bring forth blades of green and see them flourish and ripen into tawny ears without feeling the presence of something bigger than himself and a need for communion with his silent partner of the fields. Good earth for grain, but other men sought another harvest from it, a harvest we needed. For three decades, oil companies have been drilling with only limited success. Searching, searching, searching. Then in February 1947, 20 miles south of Edmonton, near the little town of Leduc, Alberta, Imperial Leduc number one struck oil. As soon as that first well blew in, things began to happen. Overnight, the roads were filled with traffic, oil workers, and trucks carrying pipe. <laughs> I never saw so much pipe. And the landscape was changing. New derricks went up all around. Night and day, good weather and bad, the work pressed forward. With more wells blowing in, the importance of the discovery was recognized. And the swell, the flow of oil, came a flow of investors' money to pay the cost of more and more drilling. In the Leduc field, each well costs about $100,000, and it takes six weeks to drill the 5,000-odd feet down to oil. of achievement carried the workers through the endless drilling, the changing of pits, and the lowering of drill pipe down, down, down to the bottom of the hole.
As the drill bit tore at the rock, specially prepared mud was pumped down the pipe to return to the top, carrying up the rock cuttings. The mud is tested constantly for consistency and sometimes brings to the surface the first traces of oil. When the oil-bearing rock is reached, a swab is prepared and lowered into the casing-lined hole. After much swabbing, the column of mud is gradually removed until finally the pressure of oil and gas causes the oil to flow upward. Quickly, the flow is turned into the mud sump. When most of the mud is blown clear, the flow is turned into the flare pipe. The spectacular flares burn off the first flow of oil, which is contaminated with mud and other impurities. When the oil flows free of impurities, it is directed into the separator on storage tanks. Instead of setting up storage tanks at each well, batteries of tanks are built and a network of pipelines brings in the oil from several nearby producers. Gauges record the production of each well. and tests of all descriptions permit efficient control and economic recovery from the hidden reservoir. Oil from the first producing wells at the Duke was shipped out by road. Trucks, big and little, old and new, pounded the roads, carrying the crude on the first leg of its journey to the refinery. The railway siding at the Duke suddenly became a terminal of importance. As the field grew, roads were improved to cope with the heavy traffic. Transit routes were taxed to the utmost, and a program of road improvement on a cost-sharing basis was undertaken by municipality, province, and oil company. The development of the field, estimated to cover 20,000 acres, was in full swing. People flying from Calgary to Edmonton saw the tiny well sites far below, spaced by government regulations, one to each 40 acres. Most of the mineral rights are owned by the Alberta government, and oil royalties are a substantial part of the province's revenue. After the discovery, other companies were soon in the area, drilling and bringing in wells. During the first year, Wells came into production on an average of one every nine days, and almost half a million barrels of crude were produced. The rough pioneer days of the field were over. When wells came into production, derricks were moved to new locations. Batteries of tanks and separators were painted and landscaped. Separator operators continued to watch the steady flow of crude. At the railhead of Nisku, tanks were erected as one step in a new system for handling the growing volume of oil. Fifteen miles south of Edmonton, where a new refinery was fast taking shape, Nisku's three huge tanks would receive the flow of oil through an eight-mile pipeline. Construction of this lower cost, more reliable method of gathering the crude began with the racking and welding of the 18 steel pipe into 200 foot lengths. While the farmers worked their fields nearby, welders made the line continuous. Each farmer received payment for the right of way and compensation for any loss of crops. A side boom caterpillar tractor held the pipe for an insulation crew, which followed tarring, wrapping, and tarring again. As 
as the rappers worked, the heavy ditch digging machine scooped out a clean five foot trench straight across country. The side boom tractor eased the line of steel into the ditch. Then a bulldozer buried the pipe. The fill was packed down and leveled and topsoil was spread over it, so the farmer would lose none of his fertile acres. But all was not smooth sailing. The route of the pipeline crossed several ravines. One truly in particular presented an engineering problem, for it was 165 feet deep and 500 feet across. Cement piers were poured. Used drill pipe was welded into towers on each side. Heavy steel cables were strung across. Out of necessity, ingenuity and materials quickly available, grew a bridge capable of pushing the heavy pipeline on at surface level. A suspension bridge took shape with its catwalk made from airstrip matting. Special insulation was added to the pipe, which was to hang exposed through the cold prairie winter. Then steel wires inched it across the span like some fantastic serpent. Those who watched the pipe crawl inexorably over the coulee saw in it a symbol of the increasing flow of oil from the wells of Canada, slowly bridging the gap between national production and consumption, a gap which Le Duc Field would help to close. With the last join welded, oil began to flow and a new chapter opened in the history of the field. Production increased and money which would have gone to buy American oil was kept in Canada. The Duke meant new hope of further discoveries and even a hint of future exports to the United States. But the most tangible contribution of the new harvest was a widespread reduction in prices of gasoline, tractor and other fuels. Le Duc is a busy town these days. Oil workers have brought new trade, new prosperity. Stores have painted up. Signs of the new crop are all around. Services are expanding. New houses are mushrooming on the outer lots. Nice ones, too. Lots of fellows plying their trades more busily than they have in many a day. A whole new town called Devon is being built in the heart of the field. The change of pace doesn't show quite as much out our way, but it's there. For instance, we run our machinery and our automobiles cheaper than we used to. A man's harvest hasn't changed, and yet the land he's known and worked is suddenly touched with mystery. Farmer and oil man, grain and crude oil, two crops where there was one. It's strange and wonderful, this reaping of another harvest, rich and powerful, a mile below the wheat.